here is another uh, you know interesting question that we want to look at suppose you know suppose you have uh, you have some kids maybe right you know a son and a daughter maybe and then you you know invite uh, uh, you know uh, their friends to come for a sleepover okay. so you know they they come and stay for a night so their friends arrive and then there is total uh, ten, uh, 10 10 kids including their friends right the children and their friends together there are 10 of them now when when there are 10 children you know you cannot put put them all into the same room because you know the rooms are not generally easy to accommodate 10 people so they will say that okay uh, you know we don't mind if you all want to put in one you know like uh, one room but we you know let's not do that we will give you three rooms and you must use the three rooms to sleep right so uh or or let's say four rooms right in the in the question we, we are given four rooms okay so so we are given four rooms to the 10 children now say that okay you go to the four rooms and then uh you know whichever groups you want you can form right you know who or want to sleep with the others you know decide and then go and uh, you know find the corresponding rooms and uh, and then uh, you know let us know and then you know go go to the rooms right now how many different ways this can happen right because you know depending on the children's preference right whom uh, to group with there could be many possible uh, ways to do this right so how many different possible ways this can happen so how do you uh, solve this right if you ask this then there is some there is something which is not very clear about this question right so what is not clear is that when we say how many different ways what exactly do we mean because uh, you know i can say that okay the children let us say uh, a b and c are going to the room number 1 because i gave four different rooms right so room number 1 uh, is uh, you know uh, not the same as them going to room number 2 right because rooms are distinct right if i consider the rooms are distinct then uh, they are not the same but maybe if if you don't consider the rooms you know they, i gave you four rooms doesn't matter what matters is the way the children are grouped together right i want to just see that who are all going together to uh sleep right but if i also want to know who are all going to which room then that is a different question so there are two different questions one can uh, bring from this now both of them can be interesting questions right so therefore we want to look at both of them right so so what happens if when the you know the Uh, which group uh, which which group of students or uh, children go to which room is important and what happens if the rooms are not considered different that is which group goes to which room is not important but what kind of groups are formed is only in the inter- interesting part now if you think about it you can see that these two questions even though uh, you know can be very different you know in their values they are very related as well okay. so can you think of uh, uh, some argument to say that solving one is you know like right like, like solving the other also in some sense so so this is an easy observation but i want you to think about this okay so think about it and uh, tell me why uh, you know solving one is as good as solving the other right once you get an answer to the first one you know how to solve the second one or vice versa right so again i don't want to uh, you know give all this small small ways right answers to all this small small ways because if you don't think about this you know you are never going to learn things so therefore some of these questions when i write just why and don't explain why it should be something which if you think about for some time you should be able to come up with you know it's not going to be a very difficult thing but something interesting and you should be able to come up with that argument if you are not able to do that then there is something that you have to work more okay so 
hoping that uh, you solve let us continue now let's uh, let us look at uh, you know more general uh, statement of what we were looking at so let k less than or equal to n uh, be positive uh, integer okay so n is a natural number again and uh, k is also a natural number now a partition of this set let's say set 1 to n right into k blocks is a set of k subsets of the set 1 to n let's say uh, you know uh, b is equal to uh, set b1 b2 etc bk right where bi's are blocks such that uh, bi intersection bj where i not equal to j is empty that they are disjoint right we are pairwise disjoint and their union union bi is equal to the whole set right set 1 to n so i i think i already mentioned this notation that uh, i will use the notation that uh, uh, the within the square bracket uh, n is the set 1 2 n okay, 1 2 3 to n now so so what we have defined here is a partition of a set okay so a set with n elements i am partitioning into k blocks such that uh, they are pairwise disjoint and the union is the whole set And now we want to find the number of possible such partitions, right? Number of partitions of uh, the number of partitions of the set n uh, or 1 to n to the k uh, blocks with this property is called a partition. I mean, uh, I mean yeah, so, uh, so we want to find out such a number of such partitions. Okay? So we want to count them. And, and and if you just uh, look at this definition you, it will be very clear that you know the earlier question that we were looking at regarding the children sleep over party was precisely the same right in some this case now here is an example so if you take the set uh, uh, one two three four then you can partition this set into three blocks right in six different ways so I want to partition it into exactly three blocks. Now that can be done in six different ways. That is the claim. So let us look at the six uh, sets that I am going to give and see whether they are the partitions first. So here is the set, uh, set one, two, set, you know, singleton three and singleton four. That is the first uh, uh, partition. Then set one, three, singleton two and singleton four and etc. etc. Set 3, 4, singleton 1 and singleton 2, right? So these six, uh, we can see that, you know, they are, uh, you know, uh, each uh, blocks are disjoint in each of these uh, partitions, right? So if you take any of these, the elements does not uh, repeat. And and uh, and they form, you know, the all elements appear there. So therefore, the union is the whole set. So these are all partitions. And we have exactly three blocks, right? A two element uh, set and uh, two singletons and since we want uh, three blocks and we have only four elements the only way to partition is to have like two in one set and one and one in other sets and this will tell you why we can only have six possibilities right so uh, maybe you you argue it slightly more formally right why uh, only six uh, are there you know, so six are already there, but why there are no more, right? So give me an argument for that. Now, uh, another example, but you know, I want to do this as a kind of uh, homework uh, example, or maybe maybe not. Maybe why why, why don't we do it here? So, so there are uh, twenty five partitions of uh, you know the set one two three four five into three blocks. So we, we said that when there are only four, right? One, two, three, four, uh, number of partitions into three blocks is only six. Now, when you add one more, we have 25 of them. Now, how, how, how is uh, this exactly uh, 25? Can you give an argument why this is 25? Okay. So, so uh, maybe uh, you should stop and think about this. 
for some time uh, before uh, going further because uh, if you can do it on your own that is the best okay now let me let me uh, give an argument uh, if you have thought about it for some time please continue so so we are looking at the partition of set 1 2 3 4 5 right so this is exactly five elements 1 2 3 4 5 right into three blocks three blocks since we are looking at uh, uh, exactly three blocks what we can observe is that is that uh, uh, the only possibilities are you can have elements uh, you know the sets uh, you know in the partition b of uh, cardinality either 3 if and if there is 3 and since we need exactly 3 blocks you know if you take 3 elements into one set you the other two must be 1 1 because there is only 5 of them right so it could be it should be like something like cardinality 3 1 1 it, this is not the set 3 1 1 this is not set 3 1 1 so we should have the blocks of cardinality 3 1 1 this is one possibility other possibility is that you have uh, two uh, you know one one subset has two elements then since there are only two more and we have three elements so we need to have another two and then one and you cannot put four into one you cannot put one 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 etc because you, you have only you are only allowed three blocks so one can verify that there the only two possibilities are blocks of size 3 comma 1 comma 1 or 2 comma 2 comma 1 now once you observe this well we know that since uh, we have uh, you know exactly three blocks and you you select the first let's say let's just concentrate on this part right 3 1 1 right suppose you select a three element subset from the five elements so which means that how many ways you can do this this you can do it in five choose three possible ways right once you choose the you know five choose three possible ways so what is five choose three five into four into three by one into two into three which is ten right so in ten possible ways i select this then uh, we have only choice uh, is to take the remaining two elements as singletons right so there is three elements are already gone the remaining two must be singleton and there is no choice there so we have exactly 10 possible ways to do this now on the other hand if you look at the 2 2 1 configuration then you can see that if you choose let us say uh, two of the elements right in the first uh, how many possible ways uh, five choose two possible ways right five choose two possible ways you select the uh, the two elements right first two elements then to select the remaining two elements or one element right once you choose one element it is very clear what are the other two elements going to be or if you select the two elements again it will be clear what is the remaining one element right so the remaining two elements can be chosen in how many ways another five choose two possible ways right i mean not five choose two uh, the remaining is uh, three choose two possible ways right then the last one there is no choice but there is a problem if you use the product rule here like you know five choose two and three choose two then what you will get is that 5 choose 2 is 10 and 3 choose 2 is 2 is equal to 30. But I claim that this is wrong. Why is this wrong? This is wrong because 
you know when we were doing the counting we did some over counting you know can you can you think of why there is some over counting okay so the reason there is an over counting is that when you selected the first two elements of set in five choose two or 10 possible ways and then you selected a two element subset from the remaining three elements the two element subset that you selected in the first and the remaining two element subset you selected in the second could also appear as you know the, those two elements were selected in the first choice and the other two elements were selected in the second choice so in these two possible ways it can come and we are counting both of them when you take the multiplication so therefore since we are counting each of this exactly twice we can divide by 2 so we will get 5 into i mean uh, 10 into uh, 3 divided by 2 which is equal to 15 so i have 15 possible ways only not 30 possible ways and therefore uh, the total number of such uh, partitions into blocks is 15 plus 10 15 plus 10 is equal to 25 okay so we need to be very careful uh, when we when we uh, do this kind of counting because over counting must be avoided right or if you do over count you have to find a suitable way to deal with that okay now <coughs> the number of partitions of an n element set into k blocks is denoted by s of n comma k okay so these numbers that we were looking at they have a specific notation so if you are looking at n element set and you are looking at k blocks then s of n comma k denotes the number of partitions of an n element set into k blocks and this is called the sterling number of second kind okay so the number of partitions of a set into k blocks is denoted by snk and is called the sterling number of second kind so one can ask like what is the what happened to the first kind right why we are not looking at the first kind before we look at the second kind we will look at the first kind uh, sometime in the future but you know that is much more uh, much more difficult to deal with you know it's a much more uh, uh, involved computation and we will uh, we will look at those things uh, in the later part of the course so for the time being we will uh, stick with the sterling number of the second kind now how do you find SNK? Can you find a formula for SNK or uh, can you find a way to compute SNK? Right? These are some interesting questions one can ask. So I want you to think about these questions. And uh, uh, here are some observations. So SNK is a zero if K is greater than N, right? That is very clear. And SN0 is 0 if N is greater than 0. That is also kind of clear why. And uh, S of 0, 0 on the other hand is equal to 1. Right? That is precisely one way to do this. You know, basically, there is nothing to do. Right? So that is precisely the one way. Now, S of N, 1 and s of n comma n are always going to be equal to 1 this is also another observation you should verify that you know whatever i claim don't take it for granted right when i say something and you think that why it is that case it means that you are supposed to figure it out yourself okay think about this and find out why and and they are they are kind of easy question that's why i am giving you is it as an open uh, just a you know statement without any argument okay so if I figure out why these things are the way I have defined it here. Now, to come up with solutions to this, we might need to use some uh, new uh, ideas. So, one of the ideas that is that of called recursion. Okay. 
Now, suppose you are given a sequence of, let's say, uh, unknown values, right? So, let's say A1, A2, A3, etc., right? Is given sequence of uh, unknown values. Now, what we want to know is that we want to find out a, a way to find, you know, or, or describe, let's say, A n. Okay. So, suppose I write A n is equal to F of n, where the right hand side expression, okay, the right hand side expression uh, does not, the right hand side expression. Uh, does not depend on uh, uh, any of the AIs, but it depends on n, right? It can depend on n. Okay, so if n is equal to f of n, where the right hand side is an explicit formula without depending on any of the AIs, any of the unknowns, but it can depend on n, this is called a closed formula for n. Okay, so it's a closed formula for n. Now, on the other hand, a formula of the form a n is equal to f of let's say n comma a naught a one a two etc a n minus one. I mean this can be something you know uh, other than a n minus one, but something less than n of course. The index should be less than n. Uh, together with some initial conditions like you know uh, a naught is something a one is something etc. Some of the things can be already given, uh, which are not defined recursively, you know, they are given explicitly. Then such a statement is called a recursive formula for AN. Okay? So AN depends on some previously determined unknowns, unknowns and N also. But it does not depend on anything that we have not come across so far, right? So such a description is called a recursive uh, formula. Okay? So basically, if you know, right, the sum of the initial values, you should be able to find the next one, right, which is not known. Then using that, you can find the next one, right, you know, in a recursive manner. That's why it's called a recursive formula. So let us look at an example, right. So for, uh, let's say, uh, n uh, greater than or equal to 0, let's define p subscript n you know, uh, be the set of all subsets of uh, the set 1 to n. And let us define uh, a n to be the cardinality of p n. Okay. So, this is something, you know, most familiar to you, right? So, basically, you are looking at the power sets of the sets that we are talking about, right? Set of all subsets of 1 to n. So, power sets of the set 1 to n. And uh, we want to find out what are the cardinalities, right? We already know how to do it using the product rule we did long time back. But now we want to uh, use uh, and try to solve it using a recursive formula. So we will come up with a recursive formula and try to prove it, uh, to solve it and get a uh, get an answer. So for, uh, uh, let us say, uh, uh, solving something like this, what we can do? Well, what we can do is that uh, we can uh, we can do some observations, right? So we first we observe that a zero is equal to one, right? Because a zero is the cardinality of p zero, right? And p zero is the set of all subsets of the empty set, which is the set containing empty set and its cardinality because it is singleton the cardinality is exactly one so a0 is one so we get an initial condition now we need to find uh, the recursive relation okay so to find the recursive relation what we do is the following let me let me just erase this So we, we do the following to find a recursive relation. So what is that? Uh, so given, let us say, uh, given, let us say, n is greater than or equal to 1, uh, to construct, 
or to build any subset subset let's say s in uh, pn what we can do is the following okay so to to select such a subset we will select we will select uh, the any subset let's say s dash of uh, uh, of the subset 1 to n minus 1 right so we remove that uh, element n and look at the set 1 to n minus 1 so look at the subsets in p n minus 1 right so this means that s belongs s dash belongs to uh, I mean s dash not belongs to s dash is a subset of subset of uh, the set uh, 1 to etc n minus 1 right so s is some subset of 1 to n minus 1 and then we will uh, select uh, the element n and say that okay now i have two choices one is either to add n to this set s dash to construct a, a subset of uh, p n or i don't add it i just keep it as it is right so there are these two choices either i add this element to that set or i keep the subset as it is now this way i can create all possible subsets of p n because i take all the subsets of 1 to n minus 1 and then i add n or i don't add n right so i will get all possible subsets this way so there are two choices either add n to s dash or not add n to s dash okay so now once you know this using the product rule we can uh, you know we can we can figure out that a n is equal to 2 into a n minus 1 because you know whatever is the number of elements in you know in p n minus 1 we are doubling it right because i take this guys any element here i add n or i don't add n both way i get a subset of p n and therefore i get two times of this many which is two times a n minus 1 so for any n greater than or equal to 1 we have a n is equal to two times uh, an minus 1. Now, with the initial condition that we figured out, that is a 0 is equal to 1, we can now try to uh, find out the values of an, right, as follows, right, an uh, a 0 is equal to 1, a, therefore a1 is equal to 1 into 2, which is 2, then a2 is equal to 2 into 2, which is 4, then you get 8, 16, etc., for a3, a4, etc. So, we find out uh, what are these numbers. So now from this we can guess, right? We can guess the value of guess the value of uh, a n, right? We see that a n is something like two raised to n, right? A n is two raised to n, and then we once we find the guess, we verify this and we can use induction to prove it actually. So how do we do that? So we do the following, right? We guess that a n is equal to 2 raised to n, and to prove we use induction. So the base case is n is equal to 0. A 0 is, we already know that it is 1, which is 2 raised to 0 also. So therefore that is okay. Base case is fine. Now we t a take the case a n is equal to 2 into a n minus 1. And uh, by induction hypothesis, for a n minus 1, it is 2 raised to n minus 1. And therefore this is equal to 2 into 2 raised to n minus 1, but that is equal to 2 raised to n, right? So therefore, n is equal to 2 raised to n, which proves our hypothesis. Therefore, we have uh, we have the proof, right? So therefore, uh, by induction, we get that n is equal to 2 raised to n. So if you can guess what is the uh, formula, close formula for n, most often we can use induction easily because we know like you know a1 uh, even though it, it it may depend on like you know 
a1 a2 etc an minus 1 since we know that each of them has the same formula we substitute that and then try to figure out why the the recursive relation must satisfy this and if it satisfies then we get that it is uh, indeed the case so this way we have proved it now a uh, homework uh, this is a question that i want you to think very thoroughly about it's a very interesting question okay and uh, uh, this question has been solved in, you know by the indian mathematicians uh, many 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 years before and uh, so you should be able to i mean you know thousands of years before in fact so uh, i want you to think about this and try to see how you will solve this and how how you form a recurrence relation for this for example right so here is the question so in a certain uh, type of poetry in indian languages like uh, malayalam sanskrit poetry the syllables of uh, length 1 and length 2 are allowed right so each letter can be either short or long right a a right ka ka etc right so we have this long and short syllables we will say that lagu the lo the short one and uh, guru the long one the long one has exactly twice the length of the short one and that is that is a long uh, accepted uh, uh, convention right the, the the long one is a and a are exactly uh, you know the second one is twice the length of the first one it's supposed to be like that even though we don't do it precisely when we talk it should be exactly like that so the syllables of length 1 and 2 are allowed now you know the total length uh, you know uh, of each line in the poem is fixed to be a positive integer you know the in, in terms of the uh, syllable length right it should be exactly the same right from certain kind of poetry so we'll say that okay we will allow exactly uh, let's say uh, length 5 right syllable whatever you use it should be of length 5 so you can have maybe five lagus right five five uh, you know lagu 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 right a a a a a so there are five of them or you can have maybe maybe 2 and 1 1 1 or 1 2 1 1 right or 2 2 1 etc all these possible uh, lengths are allowed right so uh, so once so the once once the length of each line is pre uh, predefined you know something like this uh, uh, this kind of a pattern we can decide so once you decide a pattern that such a pattern is called a meter right for example llg is a meter with length 4 because ll11 and g has 2 right guru has 2 lagu has 1 so 112 it has length 4 and glg has length 5 because it is 2 1 2 right length 2 guru has length 2 then uh, lagu has 1 and again 2 so formulate a recursive formula to count fn where fn is the number of different meters of length n okay so some formula uh, define f0 f1 etc etc you know you find some initial conditions and write uh, a recursive formula uh, to uh, define uh, uh, fn and then if you can solve the recursive formula well even better but uh, you know the, uh, at the moment i want you to come up with a, a recursive formula for this okay. so this is what uh, uh, i want you to do now before we finish today uh, let me state a theorem and you think about the proof so the theorem is the following for all positive integers k greater than equal to n the sterling number of second kind s of n k is equal to s of n minus 1 k minus 1 plus k into s of n minus 1 comma k so it satisfies this identity right? for every n comma k where k is greater than equal to n s of n comma k is equal to s of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 plus k into s of n minus 1 comma k so can you find an argument uh, why uh, this is the recursive uh, formula for snk so this is the recursive formula definition for snk right it depends on s of n minus 1 k minus 1 and s of n minus 1 k and recursively it can depend on the previous ones right basically so uh, this is what uh, i want you to do okay so think about how to uh, do this and and we stop for uh, 
uh, today we will continue uh, with uh, uh, the proof of this and uh, other results in the next lectures